Fantastic. All right. So here's my contact information. I know a lot of you folks on here, so feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, but let's jump right in. So today I'm going to demo how you can combine the SharePoint framework and dynamic CSS, specifically on optimizing SPFX extension styles. So I'm not sure if there's any new new ones on, on the call. Feel free to chime in if this is your first time, if you're fairly new to uh, SharePoint framework development. Would Good good to know. Uh, we're going to cover some of the high-level basics real quick, CSS versus SAS and some of that. Uh, we're going to see how within SAS you can have modules versus non-modules. And then specifically we're going to see how we can optimize those styles. So we're going to look at some targeted CSS hashless class name preservation. Boy, that's a mouthful, but it'll make perfect sense once we show it to you. Uh, then we're going to see how we can optimize the bundling of our styles. Now, that sounds weird, what styles doing in JS. Uh, if you're new, that may sound kind of for foreign, but we'll see exactly how that works. And then we're going to see how we can dynamically load those styles so that we're not overloading our client's browser. So what's the use case that we're going to uh, use this strategy in? There's lots, but a few of them, uh, and today specifically, we're going to see an application customizer extension. We're going to look at how we can utilize some pseudo styles. So pseudo styles, if that sounds unfamiliar to you, are styles that you use for things like hover and active. Uh, so we're going to highlight today how we can use shadows and glows. You can also use them for animations. The use cases, strategies where you can use them, list formatting, we'll see that today specifically. But you can also use them in your custom some web parts, other extensions, aka specifically where you own the HTML. So we don't want to go creating styles, overwriting uh, Microsoft styles. That's just going to lead to catastrophe. But anywhere you own the HTML, uh, we can put into use a, a style uh, global application strategy like we're going to see today. All right, so what is our use case? Well, here I've got a list uh, of some PNP community members. Uh, and this is using a view style definition. And it's just styling some information in the list. But what we would like to do is we'd like to add some styles that allow us to provide some of those hover states to things like um, these buttons here. So we've got these little buttons here that are generated by our view definition. And we're going to highlight specifically, we know that if I come in here and look at the element, we can see that I've got this PNP hover button style right down here. So we're going to key on that element. That's going to be part of our CSS today. And, and we want to apply some, some nice effects. Uh, apply some, I'll let them mute. Thank you. We'll apply some nice effects to these when we hover over them, and we'll use an extension to do that. So let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio Code. Now what we see is just a basic, very basic, out of the box, scaffolded, um, extension, application customizer extension. And over here in our styles folder, I've created a styles folder, we've got a collection of style files, uh, some plain CSS, some SAS, some modular SAS, some non-modular, and we'll, we'll see what that means. So we're going to start, we're going to move through some of the basics real briefly, just for those that are maybe new, so you have a, a good foundational understanding. And we're going to start with our button shadows CSS. Now this is just a plain CSS file, and you can include plain CSS files in your extension if you'd like. Not the most robust, there's definitely Definitely some limitations, but all of our styles follow pretty much in this example the same concept. We've got things like section body, section header, site body, site header. As you can imagine, those are fairly basic names. It could very likely conflict with another third party style or some other web part or some other extension. There could be a collision there, and so we'll, we'll see how we can fix that. Uh, then we've got a little bit more of a verbose style here in uh, our PNP button hover style, and this is specifically the one that we want to see applied to our list formatting definition because we'd like to be able to see a glow or a shadow or something like that applied when we hover over it, so we'd like it to inherit that. So we'll jump back, and we're going to go ahead and just show how to import the plain CSS. So we'll go up into our import section, and we will just save. Now, pay attention to the dist folder right over here. For those that are new, when you create and import styles, um, they're actually going to get become part of the generated um, part of the generated uh, JavaScript. And so that's what was just generated right here is our uh, JavaScript, which will then insert those styles into the head. So if we come on over to the generated file and we do a search, then we, we see all of our styles now added. There's a lot more styles, obviously, in that file than, than I showed. I had most of them down to the bottom, and, and that'll be a point made here soon. But we see it's now included them. 
But this is just plain CSS. We, we don't really take advantage of the SAS. Um, again, what about our collisions? Uh, we, we might want to include variables. So obviously not the best option, but an available option. So let's go ahead and close our JS, and we'll go ahead and take a look at our non-module. SAS file. Now this is a little different in that we're, because it is a SAS file, we're now able to utilize variables. So you can see I've created a variable here, very simple, these are very simple examples just to kind of illustrate the purpose. I've, I've defined a shadow color and then I've used this down here in my hover declaration. So that can be applied. And now these could come from other files, we can have multiple, uh, much more robust architecture here. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to now include this, replace the CSS, and so I'll just go ahead and paste in the importation. It's going to look pretty much identical, with the exception of calling in the non-module, and I'll go ahead and save. Um, now, when we when we generate this, and this gets generated, of course, what's going on in the background through my gulp serve is that it's being web packed, and it's going to be generated again in here. So if I come back in and do another search on on style, we can see that that's showing up, and we come down to our hover, and we can see that that color we were using is included because it was uh, um, executing on, on the variable. So uh, again, though, we have our problems where there could be a collision on these very basic named CSS class names. So we want to we wanna fix that. We want to take advantage of a more robust uh, importation strategy, and that's where these modules come in. You'll notice the only differential between the name and the non-module, and the module is a dot module. So we'll go ahead and include that. We'll replace these, and we're going to include both of them now. We're going to include both the non, uh, the, the shadows and the glows, and we'll go ahead and click save. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to do what's called hashing. Uh, it's going to add on a dynamic name to the end of our class names, so that way we don't actually have any collisions. So now if I come back in, and as soon as it's finished web packing, which it has, go ahead and search for them. And now you see there's this mapping that occurs, right? So now what's actually being utilized is this, this hashed version of all of our styles. So great. So now there's no more collision necessarily. We see that they're here. Section body is now section body blah, right? So we don't have to worry about a collision. But this is not exactly the most robust way for our use case within a list format, and we actually might want to reference them um, in, a, in a better way. And, and so if you were actually writing HTML in this, or if you were doing this inside of a web part, then you might actually be writing HTML down here at the bottom. And, and we could name these modules. So I could come in and change this to be uh, button from. And now you can see that it's including it, and I can actually come in here and say styles, button, shadows, dot, and it'll give me access to all those. So if I was writing HTML in here um, and needed to access those styles, that, that's a way I could do it. And there's some really good documentation, so I won't go too deep. This has all been very basic documentation or information that you can get already uh, in the documentation, just good for some, some newbies. Um, but in this case, in, in list formatting, we actually want to, uh, we want to preserve maybe that more robust style name or, or class name that we saw inside of our uh, modules files for shadows and buttons. We're okay hashing these guys, uh, for example, in this particular situation because they are basic. So there's a very cool feature in SAS that you can wrap styles around that you want to have preserved. So it's a uh, colon global, and you just uh, do this. So you see I'm wrapping these styles that I want to have preserved in colon global, and I'll save that one. I'll come in and do the exact same thing. Oops. Put that. Put that there. So now we've done that to both our button glows and our button shadows, and we'll go ahead and let Webpack come in. And if we go back into our customizer and do a search, there you go, it's already taken it to us and it's already refreshed. We see we still have the hashing on our, there we go, we still have the hashing on our generically named ones that we were okay providing that hashing to, uh, but we don't have it on our PNP hover style, button hover style. So now I could still use this more verbose name that's likely to have no conflict, right? You can name them more verbosely uh, so that there's a very virtual no chance of having a conflict with another another style solution or web part or something like that. Um, 
Now, what if we wanted, though, to dynamically call in, right? So in this case, we're using a couple of glows, shadows. These are both, as you can see, there's a lot more styles being loaded in here. And we only want one or the other. We only want to include the glows module, or we want, only want to include the styles, or the shadows module. So we'll come back in, and we can actually utilize properties within our extension. So I've already created one here called included styles. This is a string. And so if I come down here, and I'm just going to replace these importation statements, so I'll delete those, and I'm going to just put in a very simple if-else uh, that is looking for our button shadows. Uh, something looks wrong there. Go ahead and save that. There we go. Should be saving fine. And it's looking for whether or not I'm going to pass button styles or button glows. Uh, and, and the problem is that we can't actually do an import. It's giving an error in the wrong place. Uh, but it should be giving an error on the import here. So we could change that actually to require. Right. And as it web packs, it's going to actually, it's erring on me, of course, this is the demo gods, uh, because it, it says that. Always happens. Yeah. Missing, oh, uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm just pasting it in the wrong place. Yeah. Let me paste it into the actual on it method. That makes yeah, more sense. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if I put it in the right place, that would work. Okay. And that's missing so, a, a, a sign in the, in the require um, in both, actually. So closing off the CS quotes are missing, the last quote. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's yep. I must have removed that. Thank you. Okay, it's good. All right, a lot going on. Thank you. So now this is working fine, right? Um, and it's packing. So if I Oh, were you need in, one more, line 37. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. I don't know. There we go. 6 bit programming. That. So 165 persons programming together. This is pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. see, this is the power of the community, right? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. exactly. <laughs> okay, so, so now it's included. And uh, if we were to come into here, uh, we can see that if I do a search here, we can see that it's still there. Everything's web packed. We even see a new, a new hash value there. Um, but the problem is that uh, it's twice the size. So this will actually work. If I were to go over and pass this property, um, as a as a pass this this value as a property, it will load one or the other button shadows or button glows. But if we come over to our dist folder and reveal this in our explorer and go here, we can see that it's still including both CSS uh, or SAS collections of styles right here. Um, and so we don't actually want to do that because we only want to load one or the other. It's only going to load one or the other, but it's still including it in the bundle. So there's a very cool feature called a type skip excuse me type script import expression if we change these to import instead of require and we save uh, let's pay attention to the distribution folder over here What's going to happen is it's not going to split those out into multiple files. We've seen this done in a web part before, uh, like when we've clicked on a button or something like that. Uh, but now you can see what's happened is it's split them individually into multiple files. So now if we come back to our dist folder here, we can see we've got much smaller, multiple files, much smaller. And these can then be called into the browser dynamically based on our value uh, being passed in the property. Right, so let's take a look and see how that looks actually in the browser. So let's go back. Uh, we'll close this one. We'll bring up so we can actually see the network. We'll go localhost so that it filters on localhost. And what I've done is I've already pre-populated the uh, arguments needed here to include those styles. So I've got included styles and button shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh. It's going to let me know it wants me to authorize loading my scripts. So we'll say yes. And now we can see that it's loaded just the 0.0. .0 for shadows. And if I hover over our warrior horse whisperer, Chris Kent, right, our buttons are working. We got myself, Bo the show, and now that's working. And it's only loading the 0.0. .0. So we can go up and change that 
uh, to glow. We'll change it to button glows. And we'll load the debug script. And now you can see it's bringing in 1.1. So it's not bringing in the shadows. And if I hover over email warrior horse whisper, right, then it's working and it's only loading in the necessary ones. And so let's go ahead and let's actually send a message over to our favorite warrior horse whisperer. We need some help. We'll go ahead and load that here. And if we have any three amigos fans, we we know his warrior horse whispers are very great. We want him to come to Santa Poco, put on show, stop the famous, infamous El Guapo, because we all know what infamous means more than famous. And the warrior horse whisperer is needed. So uh, a pretty cool feature here. Uh, you know, again, you can use these in multiple ways um, within a web part, extensions, uh, and, and there's lots of ways to get creative. This sample was just very basic, um, just to ex illustrate the, the value of things like the import expression um, or the global uh, option within SAS there to, to provide a, a targeted hashless opportunity. So thank you guys for your time. I want to hand it back to, to Vesa.